mountains cover its surface. The markings feel familiar, but you have no idea what they mean. Your fingertips burn so hot, it feels like they are melting. An energy seems to travel between the tablet and your hands, sparking knowledge directly into your mind, as if you're reading with your fingers. Electrical sensations sizzle in your mind. You understand that the runes are ancient Rivalonian, the oldest known language. You feel the fragments under your fingers, an an lesru. You know not how, but you understand the meaning of these words with the very marrow of your being. One. One must rise. Then your fingers grow cold to the bone. Suddenly, you are just a person standing in a cavern, clinging to a stone tablet as if it were a life raft. If that was some kind of test, I'm really not sure whether I passed or failed. The tablet is ice cold to the touch. No matter what you do, no further message can be deciphered from it. tablet is marked on all sides with runic inscriptions that look like they were hacked into indecipherability with a chisel or similar instrument. As your fingertips trace these mutilated runes, your eyes flicker closed of their own accord. You see nothingness, vast, dark, and empty. You sense something ancient watching you, perusing you like a prison guard would watch a wayward ant scuttling across the floor of a cell. From within the endless emptiness, a voice hums into being and calls to you, God Woken. You sense an interest within the cold voice addressing you. Beyond the interest, you sense fangs, voracious hunger, a bottomless appetite that no sustenance could ever sate. You see your life flash before your eyes, every memory flitting by like a moth's wings at a lantern. The vision reaches the present moment and diverges into multiple strands, impossible to keep track of. Your brain aches with the effort of trying to keep up with the intelligence as it sifts through your every potential future. You see salvation and destruction and every shade of existence in between. And all of a sudden, it's over. Blackness rises once more, just as it was at the start. Eternal darkness and you. An electric feeling pulses in your fingertips, and a force field of some kind pushes you away from the tablet. Magisters, what are they up to? The Magister looks you up and down with utter dispassion. You should not be here. The Magister slowly shakes her head. To her, that writ might as well be your death warrant. Intruder! You should have come here, scum, to die.
The spirit of a white magister scowls at your presence. Get away from me, sorcerer! Filth! You'll get nothing out of me. Nothing! What? No, wait. I'll tell you. We had orders to bring down the wall. They thought there was more to find beyond it. That's all I know, I swear. Not a careful excavation, it seems. I would see something like this in reality. This, this is the archaeological discovery of a lifetime. The curious sculpture comes alive as you reach out to touch it. It thrums with power and throws flickering dancing shadows against the walls. The carving is covered in strange glyphs that feel oddly familiar. The trying to read the same, your mind swims and you read, Our first lord's babes with power glowed, our seconds born in blood that flowed, our thirds young to the wind return, our fourths to glowing flames adjourn. Samadia, the mother of wizards. Tears Endilius, poet and patron god of the elves. Under the dwarves pray to him. Blessed Zolstissa, 
An elegant god for our elegant people. Our fifth lord's cubs with minds were blessed. You try to hold your... That's it. We're through. What infernal business is this? I wonder what they did in life to deserve such a resting place. The creature looks down from its perch, trembling. It crawled out of that sarcophagus as if it had forgotten how to move its limbs. It turns to you, and you see its face is covered by an intricate mask. From behind its unmoving lips, you hear a noise. It starts as a groaning, croaking chatter, but slowly becomes more distinct. It's speaking. May Saravel te de Laruntu, Shamari. The stream of noise cuts off abruptly. After a moment, you hear a jolting, lurching voice. It wears the face of Zol Stissa, but speaks the tongue of beasts. How cruel. I suspected the Seven Lords won the war after they locked me here, but seeing their faces on dumb creatures, a depressing confirmation. Gods? What is this senseless braying? The Seven Lords were Eternals, just as I am. Deep within your soul, you feel your gods stirring at the sound of the voice. You can feel its anger and fear swelling inside you. The creature leans forward to get a better look at you, clucking and tutting under her breath. It seems to be a simple form at its core, a source vat. A walking, unfortunately talking, source vat. Fascinating. I wonder how to extract the source from the vessel without... <gasps> she pulls back suddenly, recoiling in horror. It... it is rotting. Almost imperceptibly, but it decays before my eyes. It must have no more than a century or two left. The god within you reacts. Her emotions a cocktail of fury and fear. You hear her voice, demanding that you give her control, demanding your body obey her will. An Eternal does not answer questions from whatever creatures happen to lumber into view. Especially when there is so much to be learned about their source. What happens to it, I wonder? Does it lie in whatever ditch it falls in, as its body decays? Or... Ah, no, of course. It is harvested. The god thrashes against your control. You can feel it hissing that this creature is dangerous, that it cannot be trusted. To have had the technology of the Eternals, and made this. How crude. Although effective in its own way. Poor creature, created for a sole purpose, 
and yet so ignorant of its function. It is a tool to collect source until it is ready to be collected, most likely by its creator. And given that face, I can well imagine who your creator may be. What a lazy way to feed one's power and one's ego. You start to speak, but it's too late. Zor Stissa breaks free, and the voice that emerges from your mouth is not quite your own. A terror, you worm. An eternity locked away was too good for you. I should have seen you ground to dust and fed to the wind. Your heresies deserve nothing less. The figure recoils, as if struck. Zor Stissa? What? What happened to you? Did you truly fall so far? Silence! It is your king that has fallen. He and all the other eternal powers were flung into the void. And the power you were too scared to hunt has made me a god. And yet here you stand, small, weak, decaying. I will not even need the Aetiran to grind you into the dust. You feel your god freeze at the mention of this Aetiran, a cold terror settling in your chest. Where is it? Ha! Of course you never found it. You always lacked imagination, my lady. I hid it in these very caves, although I can feel its distance now. Someone has uncovered it. Perhaps they intend to flay the godliness from you. No matter. Given your pathetic state, it is mine to collect at my leisure. As for that monstrosity you have made your shell, it was designed to die, and I think it is time that design were fulfilled. Do not worry, the source shall not be wasted. It will carry me from this tomb. It will bring me freedom at last.
Hey. 